It's now time for our main interview. That was Mark Armand with his latest song, The Boy Who Came Back, which you might think was about him, considering the number of times he's retired from the scene. Well, Mark? It's not at all, no. It's, um, I know it's that, um, I suppose you could, you know, people sort of link in the title with The Boy Who Came Back, you know, me as in coming back, but I don't really think I've been away anywhere, really. I mean, and the, and the sort of the comeback thing is always very sort of Dorothy Squires. I mean, I have been compared to the, the Dorothy Squires of electro-pop, I suppose. Um, uh, but it's a bit, no, it's nothing to do with me, really. Um, it was it's just about a boy that, um, somebody that I met quite a while ago, and I usually tend to sort of, I meet people and I write songs for them or write songs about them, sometimes, sometimes with them knowing, sometimes without them knowing. Or I meet somebody and I think, um, oh, I'll put them into a situation of a song. They might be telling me about something about themselves. Mm. And I think, oh, I'll write a song about that. So, um, uh, anyway, it's just about a boy who's sick of the, uh, the sort of uh, the prison-like confines of his conventional life, i.e. wife, kids, home, mother, etc. Decides to become a vagabond of the open road and to grab onto his last threads of uh, youth. So, admir admirably, he decides to take off and uh, become a vagabond, but he finds that as time goes on, he finds he uh, craves the, um, he craves security again, so he cops out and goes back home. <laughs> <laughs> Can I talk to you a bit about your background? Um, would you say that you had an ordinary childhood? Um, well, I don't really know what an ordinary childhood is, really. Um, it wasn't, I suppose, an ordinary, ordinary childhood. It was a pretty stormy childhood, really. Um, uh, Why? Well, I suppose, like, um, my sort of parents never, you know, never got on and things. I suppose... And, you know, and uh, I never really seemed to fit in to any situation anywhere. I always find it very difficult to fit in. I sort of struggled to find, you know, I still always struggle to fit, find it to fit in. I never felt, I've never felt that I fitted into anything, anywhere, at any time. There was a recent article in the Sunday People um, where you, your father yeah. was, uh, yeah. was quoted in that article. Yeah. Um, how, do you f how did you feel when you, when you read that? Um... It's that, um, well, I have a deep feeling for my father. Um, I suppose you could call it hate. <laughs> um, uh, I just thought, which is what I ex I'd expect of him, really. It's the sort of thing I'd, expe I'd, 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 I'd expect him to do. I was very, very up upset about him. I know that um, he did some other thing where he, um, he was done for... Um, I mean, if I'm going to talk about this, I might as well talk about it. He was done um, for um, some criminal thing or something that he'd done, some robbery or something, and he'd stood up in court and said it was because um, uh, I wouldn't give him any money, because I was making lots of money and wouldn't give him any. I haven't seen him in a long, long time, in years and years and years. Mm. I don't want to see him. My memories of him are very unhappy memories. To see things like that in um, Sunday People is what I'd expect of him. And it also sort of brings up those very unha unha unhappy, unhappy memories. Mm. He didn't help me. He didn't, you know, he didn't... Um, uh, really do anything for me. I think it's just sort of really messed me up quite a lot. <laughs> Is it true that you, that you lived in a brothel in Leeds? I moved into this um, basement uh, bedsit where water ran down the walls and the drains blocked up outside and there was only one window and that was in the door. It was, it was dark and it was horrible. I thought it was glory at the time because I just, the first time I'd really sort of got away from home and my own independence and my own life and it was wonderful it was mm. you know it was just freedom like, it was freedom yeah I, I wouldn't have cared if it was like a, a, a dustbin i mean it was literal sort of dustbin literally and um and i all you know and i was and it used to intrigue me the way there were girls wandering like i'd be on my own doorway there from the upstairs door there was always girls coming in and out all the time sort of all hours of the night and, and i used to think that at first that they were nurses yeah, I thought they had odd night shifts and <laughs> used to work at the local hospital. But um, uh, the um, lady next door informed me that I was actually living in a brothel and there had been raids there from time to time. Because you seem to have a great sympathy for the seemier side of life. The, 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 the bizarre... losers and the underdogs and yes. things, yeah. Those, those why why do you I think love. that is? Is that because of your childhood? I or? don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. It's just those are the people that I really, I really find interesting, that I really love and I really sort of think of the real, the sort of great people of life, you know, the real sort of odd people of life that, that are, you know, that, um, you know, I like things like, um, I go to New York and I like people like the, uh, the bag ladies and, and the tramps and the down and outs and things. Those are the real interesting people, you know, real people who, 
you know, why are they, you know, what is their circumstances of life that's, you know, that's brought this about? And, um, you know, maybe it's just some, uh, some stupid fascination, some stupid um, obsession, whatever, probably a mixture of all, lo lots of things, you know. But those are the people I really I identify with, I think, a lot, you know. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> <laughs> a psychiatrist would, I think, would find me very interesting. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, fir the first album dealt with the sexual underworld, with with seediness and yeah. perversion, um, and at the same time, you were a pinup in a teen <laughs> magazine. <laughs> That's I never can never understand why. You know. Well, I, how did you feel about that? I've always thought I always thought I was incredibly ugly. Really, I've never thought I can't see why people would want to pin me on that. I mean, I, I suppose people said because it's people want to mother you, I suppose. <laughs> but I can't understand why anybody wanted to have me leering down from their bedroom walls. Do you find that men are sometimes hostile to your image because you have a sort of yeah. androgynous image, don't you? I never thought I had actually. I've never looked. I've never sort of. Um, thought of myself like I've never felt myself I, I don't think I'm pretty enough or anything like to be androgynous I've always thought myself pretty ugly actually I was like you know pretty sort of distorted features but um I've never felt like you know but I, I do attract a lot of hostility yeah from uh, quite a few blokes yeah I've had I've sort of been threatened and had near escapes of uh, sort of uh, being beaten up you know it's the people it's often people try to show off to their girlfriends, I think, a lot, lot of the time, and they feel they want to come over and make an example of me, or think, oh, you're that puff that sings tainted love, aren't you? Or things like that. Or, um, you know, football supporters always seem, to, always seem to be getting caught in gangs of football supporters and having to run for my life. Um, Have you had to do that recently? <laughs> yes. <laughs> From about 200 of them in Soho. I think it's the first time I'd ever tugged onto a policeman and, go, and went, save me, save me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, it, it tends to manifest itself, but I, I, it's surprisingly I get a lot of people on my side, a lot of blokes on my side as well, for just, for just as many that find that, that really in, intensely feel that they have to, but I always feel those people that dislike, you know, they tend to have to shout out about, you know, um, or sort of call you a puff or things like that, I feel they have to like bop you on, you know, I think they're very suspicious in themselves, those people, they're only showing their own sort of latent homosexuality. I'd like to talk to you about your, your public announcement now <laughs> that, you, that you made, and you said you were retiring from music. Yes. I really um, felt, I, at the time... What made I, you... Sorry. At the time, I really felt that's, that's the way I really, really felt, because, you know, I was continually, as I said, as I said before, being in this business that I, you know, that I find myself totally un uncomfortable in, it's like this love-hate thing that I have with um, music, music business. I mean, isn't even that very term, music business, is... Uh, you know, it it's, sends an um, icy shiver down my spine. But um, it was a very impulsive thing. It was a point of, I think, the point of, uh, where I was reaching a point of no return in myself, where I was just toppling on a knife edge and would have fallen over the brink. I'd probably already fallen over the brink and, and was really sort of feeling, going through a type of breakdown where I felt that, you know, it was like I just didn't see any point. I was sinking to, like, into, like, the... Um, you know, sort of uh, slough of despair, <laughs> and um, yeah, and I and like to drag myself up. But I was like trying to grasp at all sorts of things, thinking I I've got to sort of purge myself of this. Um, and I really felt that um, it was a very impulsive, maybe over impulsive thing. But I'm a very impulsive person anyway. I I do always do things all the time, and then think that was too over the top. I shouldn't have done that, you know. But I'll always go on doing these things. What made you change your mind then to to come back? I think I can cope with things a lot better now. I think I'm a lot. Less, um, uh, I think um, I've hardened certainly to, to a lot of things. <laughs> I've hardened to, to a lot of things. I've got a much better perspective, a much better, um, probably maturer way of looking at things. I mean, I'm still as childish as hell and still as a brat, you know, but um, uh, I'm still, I can cope with my critics a lot better. And I mean, I have to really, because there's a hell of a lot of them. <laughs> Mark Armand is recording his new album in Bavaria. Where else? And Nicky will be back next Saturday with a report on the new life Johnny Rotten's made for himself in Los Angeles and an interview with Stevie Wonder on the eve of his British tour. Stevie will be discussing his support for politician Jesse Jackson and remembering the late, great Marvin Gaye. But it seems that after Neil Koenig and Tracy Ullman, Ronald Reagan's getting in on this video, Lark. Perhaps somebody should tell Ronnie Baby about it because...